this was the rematch. Number 10, Tisha Torres. She uh, was a very, very heavy betting favorite. Not very heavy, but she was a clear betting favorite. And she got the job done, man. She made all of the odds makers look like geniuses against number 12 ranked Angela Hill. And like you said, it was Angela Hill that showed up, not Overkill Hill. And that's what we needed to see. However, AJ, I kind of would beg to differ just a little bit. I think that Angela Hill, the one thing that she had mentioned, if you watch any of the UFC embedded, is she says, if you uh, think about striking the way she thinks about it, she thinks about it like a video game, like an RPG. And she was like, my skill tree on striking is maxed out. It's the grappling where I'm trying to improve. And in some cases, I would say yes, but you got to think you're fighting Tisha Torres, who is a Taekwondo black belt, a karate black belt. Angela Hill's a Muay Thai fighter, much more square, wants to just walk forward in a straight line. Tisha Torres picked her apart with front kicks and side kicks all day long and i'm like huh for somebody who considers their striking to be maxed out you sure didn't find a way to get past that front kick or that side kick man it was kind of like clear karate style so shout out to karate you know i know you love to see it but uh what do you think just tell me in your synopsis of this fight what could hill have done to get past that that front kick man because it seemed like it was just unstoppable i i mean the only thing you can really do is just jam it up you know, jam it up where she's not able to put some snap on there. Because that's what I was about to say. If, you're, uh, if your skill tree is maxed out in the RPG, man, they're not even able to touch you. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's able just to slip right past that and land a crazy hook or crazy shot, something like that. But, uh, yeah, I, it was. I definitely think she needed to work a little bit more on the, not necessarily the defense, but, like, on the counter movement more so than anything. So she's able to get past that little front kick. She's able to do a lot more damage. But, yeah, it was uh, it was weird to see that. Tisha Torres fought like Tisha Torres was going to the entire time and not really anything different than we expected. Her blitzes were nice. You know, she stayed aggressive the whole time and Angela Hill just wasn't able to really handle it that much. So uh, I don't know about I don't know about uh, Angela Hill's comment about her skill tree be maxed out on striking, man, because it, it is the sport of being hit and not or uh, excuse me, hitting and not being hit back. So she got a lot of she got a lot of crack on uh, back to her. So. It was, it was impressive by Tisha Torres on my book. Yeah, it was more impressive just because this is the one of the only performances that I've seen out of Angela Hill where even leading up to it, it felt a little forced, right? You know, this was her first pay-per-view, first press conference. She was talking a little bit of shit in the, in the pre-fight presser. Um, and she was like, Tisha Torres, she was like, yeah, Angela Hill don't got nothing for me. And she was like, oh, I got something for you. And uh, when Angela Hill said her game plan was to punch Tisha Torres in the face more than she was going to get punched in the face, like that plan just backfired because Torres... Ultimately, I outstruck her by, I think, like the span of like 30 or 40 strikes, man. Like it was a very high volume night for Tisha Torres. And it goes to show this is one of those things where I think it was the even though both of these fighters are so experienced, man. Tisha Torres is, is experienced against higher level competition, in my opinion, even though they both have gone through the, the flames of the UFC. Right. We talk about uh, Marina Rodriguez, Joanna Yin Jacek, and Weili Zhang. You know, those were three of her last five recent opponents. She lost all of them, but, I mean, come on, bro. Those are killers right there. Angela Hill has been derailed, right, you know, in terms of, like, any momentum she gains. She always takes one step back, hopefully can go a little bit further. My question to you on this, because we know Tisha Torres has now kind of inserted herself a lot closer in that title spot for 115 pounds. Where does Angela go from here, man? You know, do you think that Angela Hill still can contend for a title she's 36 years old you know what I mean that's what her like the, the clock has been ticking this entire time but I mean if striking is her strong suit and she just got picked apart by Tisha Torres I mean what does that say for her her hopes you know in in the future of the division yeah I mean it, it when you look at it on paper it looks a little rough 36 years old you know kind of a little bit past the prime or getting getting past the prime that that age of it um but she's only been in mixed martial arts for you know i don't have the actual the actual number here but less than 10 years you know she hasn't taken the knocks she hasn't taken all the the ring time or she's getting beat up you know in the camp and all that stuff so i actually do think angela hill has a little bit longer longer clock than most would give her you know we're gonna see her to at least 38 39 40 years old she's got another four or five years coming um, especially in the women's division, you can fight a little bit longer than actually, you know, the heavyweight man can when you're getting clobbered around a little bit. Um, so I, I definitely think Angela Hill still has the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the forward thinking, or at least the momentum to be able to carry her towards the championship. I know if we're seeing, you know, people like Michelle Waterson, the karate hottie, where she's had a very up and down record going forward. If she's able to at least, you know, get in the name, 
you know, the highlight where she might be fighting for a championship if she does this or she does that, I could see the same for Angela Hill. So if you have the same trajectory as the Karate Hottie, as the Overkill Hill, you know, that's uh, it's not a bad, not a bad, not a bad rap. What do you think, Derek? Well, you know what, man? I'm going to have to push back just a little bit on that because I would say that the difference between women fighting and like big heavyweights is that the first thing to go is the speed. The last thing to go is the power. In the women's strawweight division, you need the speed. Speed kills in the division. And we saw Torres was way faster than Angela Hill. Like it wasn't even close. That could be an age thing because like I said, it's a five-year difference. 36 for Hill, 31 for Torres. Um, but in the strawweight division, if you don't got that speed, you got very little to offer unless you're just knocking people out. And we don't really see that 115 pounds. So I think that the window is a lot shorter than probably we're predicting for Angela Hill, unfortunately. Um, but I do think that she still has a place here. If anything, she could still be a really good gatekeeper. You know what I'm saying? But the title aspirations, it's just tough to be on the tail, the, the, the wrong side of 35 and still be like, yep, man, I could challenge for that title and stuff when you got young, hungry killers that are like aiming for that title all day, every day, man. Um, the last thing that I got to say on this one, AJ, is that... Angela Hill has now racked up the most fight time. I'm talking about time in the ring in women's fighting, you know, in women's uh, the division. I think the strawweight division, I want to say out of all of the women's just divisions in total in the UFC, man. But she's passed like Ioanni and Jacek. So it's probably strawweight. But she had like the most ring time out there. So to see that she has all of this ring time. And we're still having performances like this, man. This is one of those decisions where we can truly and honestly say... She didn't, there was no iffiness, you know, there was no like, oh man, the judges, no, this was a very, the right person won in this fight. And I think 30-27 was probably the right, um, the right call as well, man, because uh, while Hill had her moments, she just looked like a step behind the entire fight, man. You can't expect to win fights that way, man. But a uh, big win for Tisha Torres, the tiny tornado, and uh, we'll be seeing big things from her in the near future. Man.